Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. I just did a headless install of Raspberry Pi OS Lite on my Raspberry Pi 02W, and then I installed this MQTT broker with a web management interface using the Sedalo platform. And now we're going to check out Stream Sheets that's also installed with that Sedalo platform. You can do cool stuff like building up visuals in a spreadsheet type application that respond to your MQTT topics sent by your IoT devices. So let's check out Stream Sheets. The Sedalo website's very thorough, and they, Sedalo has their own YouTube channel as well. Their videos, they're very smart folks, and their videos go a little fast, so I'm going to break it down a lot simpler. I'm going to show you how to build the MQTT connector and how to get started with very simple functions and a very simple graph. And we're going to build on what we did with the MQTT broker and these two M5 Stack Core IoT units. Okay, so I'm launching Stream Sheets for the first time. That's at my IP address 192.168.1.71. And this is port 8081. And you want to read the five page license agreement. You have to go through each page. Then you hit next. You can accept the license agreement. Then you hit next. You can register for the newsletter. I already did. This is my second run. I actually rebuilt the entire Raspberry Pi Zero <laughs> 2W so I could show you the license agreement. <laughs> I already went through all this. Yeah. So here we're logging in. The default admin password is 1234. That's all in the document from the previous video. Okay, and there's a couple sample applications in here already, wind turbine and wind turbine dashboard. And like I say, we're going to adapt our MQTT implementation. Yeah, see, I had to add this parent topic. Shotoku Tech is the parent node of Core A and Core B. You need a topical hierarchy to be compatible with stream sheets. Oh, there's an alarm. Oh, the connectors have been refused, not authorized. That's because I know I already changed the stream sheets password here in the Mosquito Management Console. So we're going to go into the apps, into the streams, go to the MQTT connector. Let's go ahead and hit edit. And I'm going to update the password here. Okay. Now I'm just going to refresh it and you see those red lights all go to gray now. There we go. All better. Yeah, you see these were all lit red. Now they're all gray. We can clear the alarms and we won't see any more. Let's check out the wind turbine and wind turbine dashboard applications. Yeah, on the top bar here, you want to press start. This is pretty cool. This, this is a simulated wind turbine, and it's actually sending simulated wind turbine data. You see, now there's a Sodalo topic with power plant, plants, windmill, child topics. And you can see over here, the data is in a JSON format flashing by from the wind turbine. Okay, so now we're going to go to the wind turbine dashboard app. And you see, this window here is where the MQTT consumer... Yeah, see, there's the MQTT consumer power plant plants windmill. And the windmill dashboard app is based on that MQTT provider. So there's the wind data. And then down below is the payload in this section on the lower left. When we hit start, you'll see the data start coming in. You got power. The angle, degrees, angle and radians, and the speed. So it's starting to graph the power that's being generated by that simulated wind turbine. Well, it's slowing down as soon as I started looking at it. It's going to be a cold winter. 
So what's cool is from that payload section, you can just drag those payload items up into this spreadsheet interface here. And then you see it becomes read, inbox data, machine data, power, and puts it in cell number five. So there's power, just drag it up there. The arrival time is actually in the metadata of the payload. So let's scroll up here to the top of the payload and expand out metadata. And there's your arrival time. Okay, good. The wind picked up. I thought it was going to get cold in here. Make sure to look at the example applications carefully. So let's go ahead and build out our application for our M5 stack core units. And like I say, I added that Shotoku Tech parent topic node. We need to build our own MQTT connector to accept data from our M5 stack core units. So let's go. We need to build our own MQTT provider. So I'm going to hit new add connector. MQTT provider. Next. I'm going to name this Shotoku Tech because that's the parent node in the MQTT topics. Here you can use Mosquito locally. So Mosquito and Streamsheets are running on the same server so you can use Mosquito but you want to make sure you put that port 1883 on the end. We're going to connect to Mosquito using stream sheets. That was the client that we just updated the password on. So we know the password. And the base topic is Shotoku Tech. And put a little slash on the end there. So now we can finish. And we need to build an MQTT consumer. From what I can gather, you can only have one consumer per app, but I'm not certain on that. So I'm going to call this Shotoku Tech Core A and B. Yes. So we're going to add the child topics, Core A and Core B. There we go. Now we're ready to build an application. So I hit add and we're going to select the consumer, the Shotoku Tech Core AB consumer. I'm going to name the app Shotoku Tech. And while it's building that out, let's fire up those M5 stack core units here. Trying to send data, but oops, I forgot to start the app. So even though it's blank, you want to start it so that you can begin to gather MQTT data from your MQTT consumer. So you can see somebody just sent red. Let's expand out the metadata because that's where we're going to find out who sent it. Yeah, Core B just sent red. Core A just sent green. You got the arrival time, the source, and the value. So I'm going to drag arrival time out here. We definitely want the source because we want to know who sent it. I want to graph the results independently for both core A and core B to show separately on the graph. Well, let's do a little more uh, formatting here. I'm going to align everything to the left. Let's get a time format here. Let's use detailed time. There we go. And apply that. Send some more data just for fun. This is really fun, I tell you. Okay, a little more housekeeping here. Let's put a border there. Now, like I say, we're going to separate the data. We want to separate out when core A sends a signal and separate out when core B sends a signal. And we want to determine whether it was green or red. And then we need to come up with some kind of function that will make this so, something we can graph. So I'm thinking we'll turn green into one and red into minus one. So we'll use this switch function. Here's an example of the great documentation on the Sadala website for stream sheets. 
There we go. If Shotoku Tech Core A, then switch the result of B4, green equals 1, red equals minus 1, and default to 0. There we go. We send that. Core A sent red. You get a minus 1. Okay, let's repeat that for Core B. If Shotoku Tech Core B, then switch green to 1 and red to minus 1 and default to 0. You had to default to zero because you don't want to ha try to graph a non-number. <laughs> like, you know, where do you graph NA? Now let's do a little color formatting. I want to fill the core A square with blue because I know that's what the legend of the graph is going to show for core A. And I'm going to fill the core B cell with red because that's how it's going to show up on the legend. So we used a simple if statement and a switch statement to separate the core A and core B data. This other function here, this time aggregate, you need that to be able to graph values over a period of time. And you really have to learn that by looking at the wind turbine dashboard example application. I didn't do that at first, so I was banging my head on the table and all of the Sodalo uh, videos on their website. They're very smart people, but they just move so fast. I wanted to make a video to show you simply how to build the MQTT connector and how to get started with the simple data functions and a simple graph. So I'm applying a little more formatting here. We want to send some data because you see true. There we go. Okay. Core A was green. Core B is green. And so we'll get ones and minus ones from core A and core B. And we can use this line chart visual here. I've selected that block, core A and core B and the data. And the line chart's just really going to sense what I want to do based on what I have selected here. So you see core A and B in the legend. Let's send some data. We got some lines coming in here already on the graph. And it's going to aggregate over time. So we'll be able to see the data over a period of time in the graph. Now I'm just going to rationalize the y-axis here. I'm going to set the minimum to negative 2 and the maximum to 2 and use 1 for the step. So that sort of rationalizes that axis a little better. And on the x-axis along the bottom here, I want to rotate the labels so we can cram them together if we need to. There we go, 90 degrees. Okay, let's send some more data and build up that graph. This was really fun once I got it working and I'm looking forward to doing more with this stream sheet. Core B says green, Core B says red, Core A says red, Core A says green. Core B says green. Oh, and I didn't even get to tell you that you can actually publish topics from your stream sheet and it will appear in this outbox. So you can not only take data in and visualize it, but you can also send it out. So I hope you enjoyed this simple example of how to use stream sheets and that you might consider it for yourself. And before you go on to check out my IoT playlist, please leave a comment down below, give this video a like, and before you go, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.